how is it that something as intimate and personal as hair that grows on your own head can end up on somebody else's head at the other side of the world? One of the exciting things about this research was that I was moving from place to place and in a sense following the journeys of hair. We'd been importing hair from China uh, into Europe and the United States from way back in the 1860s. Printed and packed in England but foreign in, in, in you know and so there's a lot that's obscured as to where the hair comes from and, and that sort of obscuring of where the hair comes from was happening in the 1860s and it's happening now. In a sense the hair trade chases poverty around the globe. People all over Asia collect uh, the hair that's fallen from their head and gather it up and eventually it accumulates. And that hair gets you know, passed from trader to trader until you get to the big exporters. The problem with the comb waste is that it has to be untangled <laughs> and it is untangled entirely by hand or just with a simple needle. It then gets sent to factories in China and from China it gets dispersed to every country in the world. So there's a big distinction made in the trade between what they call remi hair, which is kept all pointing in the same direction, versus the comb waste or the tangled up hair. But all of these journeys are to a large extent uh, effaced. On the one hand, people want human hair rather than synthetic hair, so at some level they're putting great attention to the fact that it's human. And at the other level, they don't want to be haunted by the ghosts of the person from whom that hair has come. So it seems to uh, transgress a lot of borders uh, between the living and the dead, between the animal and the human, and between sort of beauty and repulsion. And also as a fibre it's very intriguing because it's incredibly fine but at the same time it's incredibly strong and therefore it can be used in all sorts of unpredictable ways. Things like industrial oil presses in the United States. In India also you find human hair rope being used as a sort of protective device to protect um, people from uh, harm on the road or from you know ideas of the evil eye, the jealousy of other people's vision. I was constantly surprised and I still am. I'm intrigued by how hair gets into so many different things.